So, okay, so let me retake this, just doing it on my own, and I'll have my writing instruments ready um, in case I need to write anything to explain things. So, so okay, uh, let me retake, and after this uh, second attempt, I will uh, show you the question poll so that I can give you some sense of uh, how helpful are these demonstrations. So let me retake. Okay, I got 10 minutes. Uh, let me go through this relatively quickly. Okay, spring forces of force. <laughs> Haven't covered it yet. <laughs> X is the distance. K is spring constant. Which of the choice below is the correct. Uh, so, um, that feels... You know, this question should not be in the motion set. Because we haven't covered what the unit of force is. So, um... <laughs> If you couldn't answer that correctly, that's totally fine. Because I don't think that question should have been in um, uh, in motion set. So you know, Newton is the unit of force, uh, and Newton is kilogram times meter per second squared, which we are covering with the Newton's law. But uh, unless this specific example was in the chapter one or something then uh, this is going to be challenging. Um, so, you know, I'm just uh, trying to make sure, okay, what unit should this be? So that given that I'm multiplying it to uh, meters, that I'll get Newton. So this must be kilogram per second squared in order that if I multiply it to meters, I'll get kilogram meter per second squared. But um, I feel like that requires knowledge of something that you might not know at the point when you do this before um, Newton's law. Um, okay, which of the following situations describes where acceleration is zero? Okay, starting to move from rest. Yeah, oh wait, uh, sorry, that's zero velocity, not zero acceleration. Moving at constant speed, yeah, in a straight line. So that's constant velocity, that means acceleration is zero. The rest, uh, yes, that's non-zero acceleration. This involves the centripetal acceleration, which we'll spend a little more time on when that comes up uh, alongside the Newton's law problem solving. The velocity of a particle is given by that. Um, these are the coefficients. Uh, okay, gives the position as a function of time. Okay, so I'm gonna be integrating this. So. <coughs> Um, so hopefully, so <laughs> this is really a calculus question. Um, so you are, uh, so let me do this as an indefinite integral. So if you have a velocity um, as a function of time and you integrate it, that's going to be, that's going to give you the position plus some integration constant. So here, let me do bt cubed plus ct squared dt is equal to, so uh, I, this is the power rule. Um, so the antiderivative of that is b over 4 t to the fourth power. And to double check it, you take the derivative of it. This comes down, and the, the power changes to what it is minus 1. You get this back. So that's how I know I got the correct antiderivative. Do the same thing for this. c divided by 3. Uh, t to the power 3, and then plus a c, and so on. And I check through the choices to see, I think it's the second choice that matches up. So that's my answer. Let me just check the time. Um, six minutes. I think I need to go a little faster. Um, okay, car on the segment undergoes non-zero acceleration. What conclusion can you draw? You cannot say this. It might be a centripetal acceleration. You also cannot say this, it could be centripetal acceleration. You cannot say this, it could be centripetal acceleration. It could be centripetal acceleration, because it didn't say it's going in a straight line. Um, yeah, okay, velocity graph, okay. Uh, select a qualitative correct acceleration. So I'm taking derivative. I have a constant slope here, I have a zero slope here. I have const a constant negative slope, zero constant positive slope. That's what I'm looking for. 
Okay, uh, constant negative slope, zero, constant positive slope. That looks like it. By the way, these have uh, accessibility features. If you happen to be using screen reader, the screen reader will read it to you uh, what the description of that is. And if uh, uh, we have any vision impaired student, um, you should go through S our SAS office so that you get additional time on timed assessment uh, for the you know purpose of using screen readers because that'll take you more time than someone who can actually see see the graphs. So, okay, cyclist right along um, the, uh, 50 meters per second. So one minute is 60 seconds. I think I can do 60 times 15 in my head. That's uh, um, 900 um, uh, meters, which is 0 0.9 kilometers, I think. <laughs> if I get 90%, that might be the one reason why. When you drop a hammer and feather at the same time on earth, they do not hit the ground because uh, um, feather is not in free fall. It's uh, moving at uh, terminal velocity, meaning um, there's uh, forces other than gravity influencing air, air resistance. Uh, with a hammer, that's a negligible um, uh, portion. Okay, four and a half. I think I have enough time. So yeah, it's the you know sometimes the right choices will be worded in a really weird way that doesn't make them appear to be the right choices. But you know when you look through it, if it's a matter of hem have hammer being heavier or feather being lighter, uh, I think uh, Galileo did this demo or apocryphally, <laughs> you know like a wooden ball and a steel ball they fall at the same rate. It's not about their weight; it's whether um, forces other than gravity are significant. So. Um, which of the following completes the, by the way, moon? Um, uh, as they do on the moon. Okay, yeah. Okay, uh, generally correct fact. At the top of a projectile motion. By the way, whenever, usually when I say generally correct, I mean always correct. Like, I mean mathematically generally correct. So at the top of a projectile motion, uh, the acceleration of projectile is not zero. Uh, it's G, min downward at G. Projectile is yeah accelerating downward at G. That's generally always correct as long as it's a projectile motion, meaning air resistance is negligible. A velocity vector um, does not point downward. It's either um, uh, zero or points horizontally. The velocity of a projectile is could not, might not be zero if it's moving horizontally. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, so that's that. Uh, is an object in projectile motion in free fall? Yes, um, uh, by definition, almost. Because uh, whenever we call something projectile motion, we are describing motion that's happening under influence of gravity only, which is the definition of free fall. Um, so yeah, uh, like this is meant to be a trick choice. Like free fall doesn't mean fall in the like a colloquial in everyday English sense. Which of the following is not an example of projectile motion? Um, so I'm looking for any kind of situation where forces other than gravity uh, has a, a significant influence. This uh, is challenging. Are we talking about the moment where it's being hit? Let me come back to that. The football being thrown. Okay, I think if I focus on this too much, then there's too many choices. Or, yeah, too many choices for not being an example of projectile motion. So I'll consider after that. Uh, gymnast jumping off, yeah, yeah, paper airplane because um, uh, so as it's undergoing that motion of moving across the room, uh, it's not uh, it's under influence of things other than gravity, the lift force from the air, air resistance, all those are significant on an airplane. Okay, mini then uh, about two minutes. I'm just gonna make sure I answered everything, and unless I did um, the the mental math wrong here, I should have hundred percent. Sometimes I joke it'll be embarrassing if I don't get 100%. Um, it has happened. <laughs> um, if it does happen, we'll review our work and see which one I got wrong. Oh. Okay, good. Uh, I did uh, better than uh, generative AI. So, so that's the two demos. Um, so, you know, I will edit it and, uh, you know, in, for future semesters and add it to the pile, we'll have five examples of me doing uh, multiple choice time assessment.